Hey there, friends on the internet. Um, I got an overwhelmingly awesome response to a video I made called How I Make Music on My Game Boy. Um, I explicitly said it wasn't a tutorial, and a lot of people started asking me questions in the comments, which I really enjoyed. So, I, I kind of thought, you know, with the great response that I got from being posted on Vsauce 2's uh, Build It, Draw It, Play It channel for a fraction of a second, um, and the views and the subscribers that that got me, and the, and the awesome comments and, and views that you guys all gave me, I thought I would uh, reciprocate and actually teach you guys what I do instead of just showing you and saying this isn't a tutorial, I'm not going to explain these things. Um, so I kind of wanted to give you a Game Boy School. Let's go to Game Boy School. This is my Super Ultra Mega Basics Master Class Part 1. Let's get to know LSDJ and let's make some chip music because this is super fun. So, basically with LSDJ, instead of having a video game, we have a song screen. I explained this in my other video. Now with LSDJ, it's broken up into four channels. You can have all four of these going simultaneously or separately, depending on how you program and how you want to write your songs. First off, you have your Pulse 1 channel. Pulse 2 channel, Wave channel, and Noise channel. Now these all allow you to access the Game Boy's sound processor and kind of milk, so to speak, really awesome sounds out of it. A lot of the ubiquitous sounds that you hear in, well, Super Mario Brothers, Tetris, Pokemon, etc., you know. Um, and so in the Pulse 1 and Pulse 2 channels, you have control over kind of the bleeps and the bloops that a lot of people are, uh, that a lot of people kind of make connections with chip music. It's like, oh, we call it Blip Festival because we make blips and bloops with our Game Boys. And then you have the Wave Channel, which is kind of like a wave sample editing uh, channel. It allows you to make a little more robust sounds and really cool, really cool instruments and samples that you wouldn't normally get to use uh, with a Game Boy like voice samples, etc. Um, and then in the noise channel, the last channel, it allows you to manipulate it allows you to manipulate white noise. And that could be used to the effect of creating snare drums and stuff. My dog's really itchy. <laughs> um, so when you combine all of these channels and combine instruments and notes you can get a song, as I've shown you before. So what I want to do is I want to load you up a song and kind of, kind of show you some things and explain the basics of LSDJ and how to control it. Because now that we know what's going on and what, what this screen actually is, we can, we can kind of play around with it. So LSDJ uses the Game Boy format, which is the ubiquitous old school Nintendo style of the directional pad for up, down, left, and right, the select and start buttons, and the A and B button. <clears throat> so using these, you can obviously go up and down and control different uh, parameters inside of the program itself. So going up and down allows you to move the cursor and highlight different fields. In doing this, you can select, delete, copy, paste, or alter the field depending on what direction you press on the D-pad in combination with the A or B button. So let's say I want to load a new song. I use the directional pad to move in the menu to the load save song slot. I press the A button. A button is the all the time confirm and action button. Activate! Activate with A. That's what it stands for. B is back. Easy enough to remember. Alright, so let's load up a song. Let's load up one. Here we go. Once again, you load up songs by using the D-pad to select the highlighted field, and then by pressing A. The Game Boy will do the rest for you. So now, you can see that I have lots of letters and lots of numbers in here. As I stated before in my other video, these don't necessarily mean anything, but are just... Oh, good goodness. Imagine if I could, with my hand, instead of with the controller, 
touch and activate one of these. So let's say I just... And then this one will go. Imagine if I could do that. Well, I can't. So I have to use the controller. Now, the way I program my songs, you can see I have lots of empty spaces. In fact, I have an empty space in between every single pattern that I program. This is because I write all of my stuff in live mode. Now, LSDJ has two modes. It has song mode, and it has live mode. When LSDJ boots up, it'll always load in song mode. To activate live mode, now you can see there's an S, and up here it says song. So to activate live mode, I hold the select button. And while holding the select button, press left. Now you can see it says live mode, and I'm in L. So now what I can do is instead of pressing start and activating an entire line, like in song mode, what I can do is I can select individual ones. And then layer them accordingly. Layering is an extremely effective tool in LSDJ. You can trick the human ear into hearing harmonies and different sounds. What you hear is drums is actually just manipulated white noise. Now when I activate a track, I press well, activate a sample, rather, I press the start button on it. If I want to cancel the track, or sample, I hold select, and then press start. And this little cursor appears. And then depending on how long I have my thing programmed, it will end as soon as it finishes all of the pre-assigned patterns. However, I can activate this and then if I don't like it, or I started it out of time, or I want to do something else, I can hold select and press start twice. And that will cancel it as soon as it finishes the measure or phrase that it's on. Now, when we're in the main song screen, the whole map of the song, if you will, we can go inside each and every single one of these pre-programmed things. Now, let's go into pattern one in my pulse one channel. In order to do that, I hold select and press right. Pressing right while holding select will allow you to navigate throughout the song map. As you can see, this is where the song screen is. Now I just went into chain one. So I'm in the chain screen. The next one would be phrase one. So I press select and press right, and then I can see inside of the phrase that is inside of the chain that is inside of my song. And by putting these all together, I can create sequences of notes that people want to dance and shake their booties to. So as you can see, you can program however many you want I usually do four or eight, always making sure that they're even. But that's just my personal that's just my personal preference. You can do lots of things with this program. And I'm gonna go into further detail as uh, these videos keep coming out. So please expect more videos. I want to keep this train rolling, so to speak. Please comment, please send me messages, uh, d do anything. I'll leave links in the description. Uh, just please, let's, let's have Game Boy School. Yeah! Game Boy School! <laughs>